Hi everyone, I am Vasily Sabaev and this is Russian London. The first association with this phrase is oligarch with luxury life. We are breaking this stereotype. We will show you another Russian London with entrepreneurs, founders of startups and young people who are making cool projects here. Let's go! Today we will meet with Philip Perkon, the general producer and the founder of Russian Film Week and Golden Unicorn Award. Russian Film Week is the annual film festival in London. Currently, it's the biggest Russian film and culture festival, not in Russia. Hello, hello, how are you? Yes, I'm, it's an absolute, absolute pleasure to be here. Hi, Philip, thank you that you joined our channel Russian London. Let's start with your autobiography. How did you end up in London? Well, I was born in Sweden and uh, to a Russian parents who immigrated in the 1980s from the Soviet Union, from St. Petersburg. And uh, so I was born in Sweden and um, I joined my father who moved to London when I was uh, 12 years old and I went to school here and uh, then university. Um, yeah, that's how I ended up. It, it was really when my parents offered me to, uh, to come and study in the UK. What are you doing now here? Oh God, I have done a lot of things. So, um, I went to, when, when I arrived in London, I first went to a day school here in London. And then I got a place at Winchester College. Um, a, fam a famous British school, um, the boarding school, and um, so I studied there for two years and then I moved to study um, at Gordonston School, famous for, um, it's a Scottish school and uh, it's famous for, um, um, for its former pupils, including uh, Prince Philip, um, uh, who founded the Duke of Edinburgh Award there, and also Prince Charles, and a lot of um, a lot of people from the royal family and uh, from from over, all over the world. So I finished my A levels there, uh, but that's actually uh, where I started my first event. Uh, so when I was 16, I founded the school public speaking competition at Gordonston, and that's when I really fell in love with organizing big events and competitions, and um, and then uh, further on when I then um, ended up at the London School of Economics, studying economics. I founded the Russian Business Week, which became a big student forum for, um, to discuss everything to do with Russian economics, politics and business. And we had uh, uh, amazing speakers coming in from, from, uh, from Russia itself, but also from around the world, uh, talking about uh, Russian business. I, it was very popular at the time, this was 2008. Uh, Russia was a, a very popular country back then. We didn't have as, met, as many problems as we have now, and uh, business was, uh, was great. It was just be before the financial crisis as well. So, so that's how I got into the, the whole Russian circuit and the Russian events. Again, for me, um, Having studied at all these uh, British boarding schools, I, were, I was very detached from my Russian heritage. Um, again, having grown up in Sweden and lived in the UK. So it was a way for me to really come back and explore uh, the country that my parents are from. I was really interested in the business and the culture, uh, in the politics of the country. So that's why I founded the Russian Business Week, which is the, the, the student-run forum. And, um, and that was my first Russia-inspired event um, in London. And then I, I kept going. After university, I had my, uh, my career in finance. So I, I was in investment banking for a while, and then I was in venture capital. But in parallel, I founded my, my company called Percon Productions, and we've been, been producing lots of uh, various events, including um, Russian rock concerts at the uh, Royal Albert Hall. We did a big um, uh, Jubilee concert, uh, as I call it, uh, for Boris Grubenshikov, uh, the famous Russian um, father of Russian rock. Uh, he was, he was was turning 60 at the time, so we did a really big concert there at the Albert Hall. I think um, I was 25 at the time, and um, I also did um, two concerts at, uh, at the Hammersmith Apollo, 
uh, with uh, DDT, which is another r famous Russian rock band um, that I, I, I really love as well. Uh, so that was fun. It was one of the, uh, at the time it was actually the biggest um, Russian events uh, in town. And I think they still are to this day. Maybe one, uh, there's one concept that might have been uh, slightly bigger since. since. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into the whole culture scene, uh, uh, just really to explore my, uh, my heritage and, and, the, and, and the culture of the country that uh, uh, my parents were originally from, because I felt a bit culturally detached, um, being very immersed into uh, both Swedish and then British uh, society. According to your Instagram, you have very famous friends from Russia, how did it happen? And what should I do to become friend of Boris Grimenshikov, for instance? If you talk, if you talk about Boris, Boris it's, it's just a family friend. So my, my, my father went to the same university as he did wow, in, in St. Petersburg. Ah, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, a family, it's a family friend and he's been very close to us. And he, he used to take me to, actually, I think he's had a lot of impact on, on my interest in film because he used, when I was at school, in boarding school, I would come home and Boris, who would uh, uh, very often visit us in London, he, he's a big fan of movies and he, we, he, would, he was the one taking me to, to see Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and all of these, um, you know, um, fun British movies and, um, and so, you know, fantasy and uh, all of these popular ones. Uh, so yeah, I mean, um, we've been very close. Uh, if you talk about all the others, uh, I mean, I do have a lot of very uh, interesting and, and, and cool friends, um, both from, from Russia and abroad, but um, that comes just by, um, by uh, you know, I've been um, doing public activities for since I was 16, running competitions, running forums, running concerts, running film festivals, awards, and uh, Th those are the places that, uh, you know, talented people come. Yeah. Let's talk about Russian Film Week. In 2016 you founded this festival and now it's annual film festival. But let's go to the roots. How this idea came to you and where did you find finance for this festival? Right. Well, um, 2016. I was at, at the point in my life where I finished doing music concerts and all other events. I th it was a bit, I outgrew music events, at the, um, I felt at the time, because I was already in the Albert Hall. I did a few concerts there and I just felt that, you know, the next step would be the, uh, the O2 or Wembley or or, or similar places, and I, I, I understood that being a music uh, concert producer wasn't really my, my dream. So I put everything on pause and I was just concentrating on my, on my startup work and on my investing work. And then I kind of, um, I have this, this method that I use, I try to visualize things that I, uh, that I want to happen to me. And so I visualized that I, I, I wanted to find an event, because I love organizing events. It's been my, my big passion since I was you know, 16 years old. And I was looking for something that would be more international, that would have a, um, a bigger potential a bigger international potential because you know if you do Russian rock music it's mostly Russian speakers who come along to that but I wanted to break out of that um, Russian um, Russian community and work um, in the international community but with Russian content as well so and in 2016 um, there was the in uh, the Russian year of cinema um, in Russia There was the Russian year of cinema in Russia, but also the UK-Russia year of language and literature between the British Council and uh, the Russian Foreign Ministry and Ministry of Culture, uh, one of those cross-cultural years. And that's when the idea came that, wow, cinema, there isn't any cinema in London that looks after, you know, Russian content. And it was, um, 
it, it just uh, the idea just one day um, came and you know and we, we started developing the concept of, of a, fest, a separate festival and the separate awards the golden unicorns being uh, separate and the Russian film week being separate and um, we uh, so I started looking for financing that uh, the usual way that people did it before me uh, with Russian film weeks you know in the US and um, other countries where they, they would turn to government institutions but I went to uh, to uh, private foundations, to corporations, and started. Um, uh, so I started selling it as a, as an entertainment event, rather than a social a government uh, um, initiative, um, like many others have done previously. So, yeah, and um, we. In the first year, we got a, a great budget together, um, essentially with uh, with uh, with private uh, private sector financing, um, purely you know on, on sponsorship and marketing and building building a, a great event. Um, so that's how, how it started out. It was 2016. We I th we. Attracted about uh, there was a few thousand people, which was already big at the time. Uh, it was well, one of the one well, the biggest uh, already in the first year, uh, and then it kind of we had about three cinemas, um, maybe five venues in the first year, and then it kind of ballooned from there. Um, and in 2019, uh, we welcomed more than, uh, I think it was around 10,000 people across 18 or 20 venues. Um, we were showing more than, more than 50 films, uh, welcoming 200 talent, directors, producers, actors, actresses. Um, so it kind of ballooned from 2016 to 2019. Um, but yeah, it all started just by the uh, desire to to find something, some something interesting and something worthwhile to do in in the event space and and to uh, to promote another uh, another Russia and a, a different uh, you know Russian talent, um, Russian culture um, away from 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 politics and 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 economics as well actually yeah yeah it's very cool. Let's talk about the Golden Unicorn Awards. What is it? Well, the Golden Unicorn Awards is um, something that I conceived uh, during uh, my pitch to do the Russian Film Week. So I wanted, uh, on one hand, I wanted a festival where we would show, we would screen movies. Uh, you know, we, we screen them in, in cinemas in London, in Oxford, in Cambridge, in Edinburgh at the same time. But I also wanted um, an awards whereby uh, Russian filmmakers would get um, feedback on their work. And that feedback would then be, um, and those films with that feedback could be promoted to a wider audience and uh, um, the wider film circles um, internationally. That way, you know, promoting Russian filmmakers to do more international work, more films to be sold abroad and, and, and be highlighted abroad. And um, so I built Russian, uh, uh, the, the, the Golden Unicorn Awards as, I got inspired by the Golden Globes, actually. So the Golden Globes are uh, an award for English-speaking film in the United States judged by a panel of foreign journalists. So it's a kind of a, a foreigner's view or an international view on, on American film. And that's exactly what the Golden Unicorn Awards are. We have an international jury of filmmakers and critics and journalists and producers and casting directors from all around the world, from the US to, to, to the UK to Europe, looking at Russian-speaking film and giving them you know, awards to best actor, best actress, best film, best director, best emerging talent, etc. Um, and that way, um, uh, those filmmakers in Russia can get not only a local view like they get in Russia, but they can get an international view uh, on their work. And actually, if you look at the, uh, the nominations and the winners of the Golden Unicorn Awards, um, they are uh, often very different to the ones that get the awards in Russia. Yeah, I've seen that, and it's a lot of 
um, films which really not so I can say mainstream in Russia and it's very very good quality of works and high level of directors Thank you. Uh, well, I mean, uh, we have a, uh, a European nomination committee, we have of film experts and cultural experts, and then we have the jury that's, that looks at a uh, very esteemed jury. We've had um, uh, Brian Cox, uh, the, the famous uh, um, Scottish actor, heading up the jury. We've had Olga Korolenko on the jury. We've had, uh, you know, um, artists from... Um, from, from London and with journalists from Variety, from The Guardian, from, you know, famous critics uh, uh, on the panel. And yeah, that's why we, we get a bit of a different view to, to what they do in, in Russia, because I mean, there's obviously cultural differences. There's always cultural differences between countries. And then, you know, every, every, um, ev every culture and every civilization views things a bit differently and responds to different trends and uh, has different tastes. So it's the same thing if we would have to look at British film with, with Russian eyes, I'm sure the, the results might have been quite different as well. Now you are preparing for the fifth uh, Russian Film Week. Yes. Will it be online or offline and who is going to come to this festival? Well, uh, the fifth festival was supposed to be in 2020, but we moved it to the 2021 because of COVID. It was our, going to be our um, kind of anniversary year. Um, it is still, we are now in, uh, in June, and it is still unknown what the world will look like in November. We are definitely planning uh, for the best scenario of going back into theatres and going back into uh, ballrooms and uh, doing our fundraising for charities as we always done. Um, whether that would be allowed by uh, government regulations and travel restrictions, uh, we will just have to wait and see. If not, we'll probably host it um, online. Why the biggest Russian film festival? and like a cultural festival as well, is in London and not, for example, in Paris. Because I'm in London. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, joking apart, I think London is a very vibrant place to be. Um, London in the UK uh, accepts uh, people from all cultures and from welcomes people from all over the world. And in general, the British audience is very receptive to um, international, international content. That is why um, I think, um, and also it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the movie capital of, of, of the European continent or continent of Europe. Um, that's why coupled with um, a great audience and uh, just a film, London is a film capital. So where else would you have a, a great festival? It would be, you know, well, in one of the film capitals in the world. Um, and sadly, I don't. Paris is definitely um, a very vibrant place, and there are a lot of great places around the world. And they do have a, um, a Russian film festival there. But just London. London is um, London's more open. London's uh, London's big and. Um, London is very mobile and uh, very interested in general in, uh, in, in different cultures and, and, and in general in film. Are you working just on festivals or something else as well? Well, um, again, I am very passionate about events. Uh, I've been, I think I counted the other day and I pr I've, I've produced and organized, promoted um, more than 300 events in my life. Um, and yes, actually, it has always been my dream to organize a uh, English film festival. So a film festival dedicated to, to English films that oh, I'm very passionate about, I know, British films. Um, and I'm also working on a, uh, a secret conservation project that's, uh, you know, for charitable purposes. Um, as well as, you know, continuing my investments and uh, as an angel investor into tech startups. Um, I think I've been, I invest in about five to six companies a year 
um, in the UK as well and then in the US. In the end of our interview, let's have a blitz. Right, okay. <laughs> what is your favorite film? Singing in the Rain uh, from 1952, directed by Gene Kelly. And the modern film? A modern film? Oh God. Um, that's a tougher one. I have a lot of um, films that I, uh, I like. Well, one of my favorite films is definitely Lord of War. Uh, which is uh, with Nicolas Cage and, uh, starring. I thoroughly, it's actually an independent movie. Um, and I also uh, like um, Snatch and Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and all the, you know, the, the London films. Mm -hmm. What is the most genius director in your opinion? Guy Ritchie, of course. Yeah. Of course, he's, um, you know, he's, uh, he has a very distinct style and um, he's, uh, he's been London-based for many years. He does, uh, you know, it just has a London, UK feel to his movies uh, that I absolutely love. Cool. And if you have chance to invite just one person to your festival from all around the world, who will it be? Leonardo DiCaprio. Because he, is, uh, he has Russian heritage. Um, a bit like me, uh, he's into, into film and he supports the conservation and environment, something that I also believe in. Um, yeah, so uh, definitely, and I have been inviting him for many years and, I'm, um, and hopefully one day he'll find the time to, to visit us. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. See you soon again in Russian London.